Hello, this is Dr. Tushar Shah, 4th of August, 27th day of our program on outpatient management of COVID-19. Today's topic, helping a hospitalized patient. How can a family physician help a patient who is being hospitalized or is hospitalized? Four ways, A, B, C and D. A for the admission process. The family physician should help book a bed. Make sure that the bed is booked because sometimes what happens is the patient goes to the hospital and realizes that the bed is not really available, if it is a private place especially. Second, arrange an ambulance uh, to admit the patient. Remember, if you make a patient go with a relative, the relative expo is exposed to the patient. So unless there is a relative who is COVID swab positive, arrange a COVID ambulance for the patient. Third, while the patient is going to the hospital, ask them to stop for an HRCT thorax if the patient is being admitted for hypoxia and can uh, is fit to go to a CT scan center. Because if you once land in the hospital, getting an HRCT involves a lot of uh, within hospital logistical problem. So it's better to get an HRCT and then send the patient to the hospital. In the admission process itself, you may advise the patient to carry uh, several things that they will need in the hospital. For example, they will need eye patches for a lighted room, mufflers or shawls for a cold room, toiletry kit and towel for the washroom, slippers for moving around and most important their cell phones, chargers and very important the headphones. Many elderly patients are hard of hearing and a headphone really reduces the ambient sound and helps them listen to their relatives on the phone. They must also carry their medicines, their regular medicines and if necessary their files. That is about the admission process. B is for billing. You can help in the billing in two or three ways. One, instruct the patient that any hospital will take an advance. The advance can vary. If it's a private hospital it can be 50,000 to 2 lakh rupees advance. If they don't have ready cash, if it's a Sunday they cannot withdraw money or whatever. Do request the hospital or take your own responsibility if you know the hospital and the doctor that they will pay on the next day. At the end of the uh, patient stay, you can help them in the billing process by requesting the treating doctor to give some discount if possible because the billing is usually fairly high and patients may not be able to afford it. C. Communication. The largest contribution that a family physician can give to a hospitalized patient is establish good communication. You all know that getting information from the hospital, especially in a patient who is in a BMC hospital, is extremely difficult. Nobody calls. I have seen patients not talk to their relatives for 15 days and then they die. It's a tragedy and we doctors think that okay, saving lives is more important than talking to the relatives. Not so, it is as important and communication is to be established. The family physician can play an important role here. I would suggest that all family physicians talk to their personal patients who are hospitalized at least once a day. A video call is far preferable, far more preferable than an audio call. Looking at your trusted physician itself gives a lot of comfort to the patient. Also talk to the physician who is treating so that you, you can inform the relatives what is happening with the patient. D is for discharge. If the patient is discharged, your responsibility is to make sure that the treatment on discharge is immediately followed. You look at the treatment sheet on discharge. If you think that there are any problems or if any older medicines have been missed, you should rectify that. You should also remember the duration of therapy has sometimes is missed on the discharge card and you have to establish the duration of antibiotic, steroid, anticoagulant therapy if there is any. So take care of the discharge card. If the patient has come out after a long stay in the hospital, I would suggest that you do look for DVT if nobody has looked for it by doing a venous Doppler of the lower limb. If the patient is persistently hypoxic, you might even do a pulmonary CT angio and see whether the patient has thromboembolism. Therefore, decide the duration of anticoagulant therapy. 
So these are the ways in which you can help. I would personally recommend the most important thing communication and in this communication one small thing that I do uh, when I treat my patients in hospital is create a WhatsApp group. Create a WhatsApp group which includes you, the treating physician if he willing, is willing to be part of the group, relatives. The relatives also should be given admin rights, they can add whoever they want because there can be a son, a daughter-in-law, a daughter abroad. They all want to know and you can't take all their calls. So make a WhatsApp group so that you can post everything by a voice message or a typed message on the group and be in constant communication. Remember, even if the patient dies, your having communicated with them will be a big thing for the relatives and they will, they will thank you even in death. Well, thank you so much. We will meet again.